Hey everybody, it's a 3D printing professor and I was not real impressed with the idea of a 3D printing pen until I found one that I actually kind of like. So, 3D printing pens, you know, the, the name of them kind of offended me a little bit. I mean, this isn't a 3D printer. It's, it's a pen that squirts plastic. My hot glue gun does that. Why are you calling this a 3D printing pen? They're obviously uh, uh, jumping on the hype bandwagon. Nevertheless, I also didn't want to spend the, the, amount, the exorbitant amount of money I felt for a glorified hot glue gun. So I found a cheaper one and uh, it's up there on my shelf. I tried it out once. It's got this big clunky adapter. Actually, it came with a UK plug, so I had to get a US adapter for it. So the the it's just got this big chunk sitting on the power brick with this big cable and I can only take it as far as the cable. And it was so frustrating to use that it's been sitting up there on my shelf ever since. I just cannot enjoy it. Then my friends at TipEye contacted me and said, hey, can you check out our 3D printing pen? So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Now, the first thing I got to say is the packaging for this box, for this pen is absolutely beautiful. They did not skimp on making an absolutely beautiful package for this pen. It comes with everything you need, uh, including a little sample of plastic to play with. And I'll just, I'm just going to add that to my, my pile of plastic because Despite the fact that they sent me a sample of plastic, that's that's not good enough for me. I also got from them a big old bag of plastic to play with, and so we had lots of colors to play with, me and my kids. So I pulled this thing out of its packaging, and within an hour, we're doing some amazing things. Here, check it out. So, it, it, when it comes, it's got this cute little stand that it stands in. And I actually recommend you not use the stand. Unfortunately, once you have the the cable on there and you've got it plugged in and you've got the filament sticking out there, that stand becomes a little bit unstable. It, it may be if it had some you know, weight on the bottom that it could hold that much wiggle, or maybe if I stuck it down or something like that. But for now, I find it best just to even when it's in use, just lay it down and use it like that. Now, it's got a really good little uh, display on it that when it's running tells you everything you need to know and it's got three buttons to run it. It's got this check mark button on the top which is used to switch between going fast, medium, or slow and you can also press and hold it to increase the temperature, which is super cool. This thing will go up to ABS temperatures, which means that you don't have to just use PLA. You can use some better materials. That's going to make this a very useful tool for fixing 3D prints. And if that's all you use it for, for the price, it's not a bad tool. It's also got the go and back off buttons. Now, I do want to complain just a little bit about these go and back off buttons. Their use is not intuitive. In order to get it to flow out, you press and hold the go button, and then once it's going, you gotta, you gotta hold it for a little while, and then you let go, and it will keep going until you press the button again, and then it will stop. Now, the back button works differently. You press and hold the back button for exactly the right amount of time. Do it for too long, and it'll stop feeding. Do it for too short, and it will stop feeding and so you got to find like that perfect amount of time to press it and then once it's backing out and you can get the filament out completely then you have to press and hold it to get it to stop so i i don't know i think maybe the addition of another button to say you know constantly feed and then forward and backward and a tap will stop either one make that consistent but that's a minor niggle it takes a little bit of getting used to to make that work but once you figure it out you're doing just fine and here are some of the things that we managed to create so of course the first thing i created was a test square just to make sure that it's going to stick to the wax paper that i was using and the pla stuck to the wax paper just fine and then i tried doing something with a little more dimensional i tried doing a half sphere and 
I realized at this point that you should not be running it when you're trying to print in high speed mode. You should slow it down to medium speed mode. It's just more natural, especially at the beginning. And then I played with doing a two color fairy wing for a Barbie doll. Again, my speed was a little bit high on this one, but it, good results. Now we're looking at the bottom of the darn thing here, uh, the top of it looks like more of a mess the bottom of it looks all right and so yeah i'd uh i'd sand this off and clip this off and then put wings on the back of it but it's it's got some possibilities here my my one son uh decided to make a dragon face and i think that dragon looks absolutely beautiful and it's definitely got the beginnings of something on there uh he complained a little bit because he found that there were holes in it uh but it's it we were this was all within the first hour of opening the package i showed him how to do something dimensional a three-dimensional shape he wanted to do a helicopter and so this is the beginnings of that and the way i did this was i drew the sides and then drew the bottom stood it up and fused them together and so you can fuse them together just using the hot glue gun or, or the, the 3d printing pen like a hot glue gun and just fuse it together and then i tried bridging it with some with some bridging across here and that didn't quite work out but you know the idea is there and with a little bit more practice we will get very good at this uh and then my other son made a, a sword a rocket sword or something i don't know i love it my daughter started with she she took uh and made this blob that's rather dimensional and then flipped it over and made a cool emoji on the other side. And this was her own creation. So very, very cool. And not a whole lot of work. She also tried her hand at writing her name in cursive. But I'm just going to put that on the pile of mess that we made. There was also a lot of mess that we made as we were going. And so expect to, uh, you know, there are tricks about, like, starting your... your Thing outside of what you're doing them bringing it in and then just cutting that part off and and going out before stopping it and things like that that you'll figure out as you use it you know this isn't really impressive but again this is all within the first hour it was super easy to use the finesse will come with time I have I'm confident and we will definitely be giving it this time now this pen runs on a little 5 volt adapter that is uh, then plugged in with a special uh, plug and, and I decided you know I'm going to take this up to the next level instead of using a 5 volt adapter I'm going to go ahead and use a USB battery stick so I got this stick at the local department store for a cheap and it does indeed power the pen the LCD is coming on and if I hit go it's getting itself up to temperature. I've tested it. It already goes all the way up to 190 for doing PLA, and uh, I think it'll do even more. So all I have to do now is take the yes, print a little adapter so it'll hold on to here, and I will have a completely wireless 3D printing pen, uh, minus the big wire that's hanging off the back to connect the battery. But never mind that. Uh, a wireless 3D printing pen also the big noodle of plastic that's going to be it's going to be way easier to use this way though i won't be tethered to the wall this is this is now free to move anywhere it's battery powered this for this alone i don't think i'm going to be putting this thing back in its packaging which has been upside down this whole time uh i think that this packaging is is going to be thrown away because this pen is never going to be stopped being used and my kids we're able to do fantastic things with it. Now, I don't recommend it for young kids, and the entire tip up here tends to get hot, so you have to hold it back here, but back here remains cool, so that's very good. Overall, I am super impressed with the Tip-Eye uh, 3D printing pen, and the price of it is extremely reasonable. I'm going to be using this pen over and over again and definitely be getting better at it as I go. So there you go, a 3D printing pen that doesn't suck. I will say one thing about it is the only way I found to turn it off after you've got the power on is to unplug it. Not a big deal, uh, but it is, you know, it's a hard reset. I, I don't know, maybe I would have preferred a power button. Maybe I could just take this cable, uh, cut it here, cut it here, put a little power switch in between and, and have a, it's, it's an easy mod, but one that, 
I, I, I feel really gives me control over this pen and really makes it a valuable tool to have. And even if you just have this for fixing prints and correcting prints in the future, which a lot of people think that a 3D printing pen is for, and that's fine. But, you know, the I hand this to kids and they do amazing things with it. And so I'm really impressed. Absolutely love it. And if you want to get your hands on one of these pens, there will be an Amazon link down in the description. I want to thank my friends at Tip Eye for, for pressing me to give this one a try. I really, I really am pleased with it in the end. I want to thank my backers and supporters on Patreon. I've got all caught up printing the tiles, and so all y'all's names are up there. And if you would like to get on this, there's still some room. So go ahead and support me on Patreon. Get your name on the backer tile. I, I thank you guys very much. You are the wind beneath my wings. As always, I want to say safety first, and I'll see you next time.